Hey there guys, welcome back, hope you're all doing well. This is Chayden here from Devil Creative Designs and I'm back again today with another awesome tutorial. This is gonna be in Photoshop where we're gonna be learning jersey designing, specifically eSports jersey designing and not for a football club or a sports club. Uh, there are a very few tutorials on the internet that teach properly about jersey designing as to what you need to take care of, what are the good, uh, what makes a good jersey design, what are the tips, what are the tricks, how to create fast jersey designs without making a lot of time, a lot of information that they don't give out specifically, but I'm going to be showing you guys everything and telling you guys everything that I know about jersey designing and we're going to be learning to create this exact jersey design as you can see on the screen and uh, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to love it. So without further ado, let's get into this awesome tutorial and get started. guys so here I am in Photoshop and uh, this is the final jersey design as you can see it looks so damn beautiful um, I spent like two two and a half hours to three hours making this and it was so stunning now you need a mock-up to make these jersey designs right so where do you get the mock-ups now unfortunately there are no free resources on the internet where you can get them for free but I will be putting down the links where you can purchase them now there are different types of jerseys this uh, jersey mock-ups uh, but uh, you know some people prefer this I prefer this some people don't prefer this so it's completely up to you but when you're give, giving uh, the design to the manufacturer the mock-up will not matter because uh, you're gonna be creating everything in a print file provided by the manufacturer in Illustrator and not in Photoshop. The Photoshop file is just for presentation purpose and to show the client or the manufacturer what it is gonna look like. But when you're giving the design, the file to print to the manufacturer, you have to give an EPS or an Illustrator or a vector file. Now, I have made a tutorial on this, on how to convert all these designs into the print file and the link for that will be in the description. So it's basically two parts. So this is, gonna, this is actually like the first part and that is the second part. Okay, so when you get the print file, this is how it is gonna look like. It's gonna be completely white. Let's add in a little bit of a lighter background. This is too harsh. Okay, this is what it's going to look like and um, if you are new to Photoshop then I would suggest watching this video a couple of times because you're going to have to get used to um, this concept called as clipping mask. Now each part is split up into a separate layer so this is the collar, this is the seam, this is the back, uh, this is the stitching. Uh, you probably might not see the stitching because it's very detailed and this is the front and this is the sleeve. All right? This is an object called as the part and then we have the actual t-shirt. All right, and um, just a couple of accessory things, the highlights and the shadows here. All right, so if I turn off this t-shirt and turn on only the parts, you can see it's just a flat uh, white um, background, right? Just a couple of layers. But then when I turn on this t-shirt, this actually gives it uh, the shadows and the highlights, which is very important. Now, before starting the jersey design, it is always good to go ahead and get a visualization uh, of how the design will actually look and probably draw that on a piece of paper. Uh, just draw roughly this or even maybe print it out if you want and just go ahead and start sketching and drawing on that. Uh, but that is one most efficient way to do it because uh, when you're doing it on hand, your mind and hand work very well and you get more ideas and more concepts drawn and very important things that you want to note. The second thing about jersey designing is the more detailed it the jersey design is, the better it is. It's a it's a bottom line. It's just the golden rule. The more detailed it is, the better the jersey design will be. When I say more detailed, does not mean more content on or more information or, or more color or more shapes on the jersey design. It has to be more detailed. Now, if you go to Twitter, you can probably see a bunch of jersey designs created by various manufacturing companies, and you will obviously be able to differentiate what is a good jersey design what is a bad jersey design the third thing about jersey designing is you don't need to have too many too many big fat shapes or too many fat objects everything has to be thin everything has to be clean and everything has to be proportional that's one important thing about jersey designing the fourth thing is using the colors from the logo itself I'll, I'll be showing you guys how to pick colors from the logo when we start off the jersey design but that's one important thing to do and the fifth and the final most important golden rule is the design of the jersey must always suit the shape of the logo if you have a, a triangular logo and uh, you 
all your jersey designs has hexagons. Uh, I mean, hexagon is okay because it has three sides, six sides, whatever. Uh, but if you're using something like a circle, it's not going to look good. And if you have uh, a round uh, jersey, if you have a round logo, probably something very sh with sharp edges is not going to work out unless the logo has sharp edges. So that's one very important thing to know about jersey design. All right, so now let's actually get into the tutorial. So the first thing you want to do is get yourself the logo for the jersey design. So I'm actually in Illustrator, and this is actually a logo done by my friend Ash Designs. I'm going to put a link down below in the description to check him out. He makes logos for a lot of people. So if you guys are interested in purchasing a logo, definitely, definitely go give him a follow. Check out his work and just follow him on Twitter. All right, so this is the logo that he made. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this by pressing Control C, come here and press Control V. And that's gonna ask me, do I wanna paint it as a smart object, pixel path and shape layer, whatever. Choose smart object and go ahead and click on OK. So there you go, that is our logo. I'm gonna go ahead and just press Control T and hold Shift and Alt to scale this up. So now we wanna pick a couple of colors. Now you don't wanna pick all the colors in the logo, just three or four colors maximum. So what I'm gonna do, go ahead, is just go select my rectangular tool, hold down Shift and then just create this small box like so. And then I'm gonna come here and color pick this and I'm gonna color pick um, yellow color first. All right, and there you go. I'm gonna select this, hold on Alt and Shift and I'm gonna drag this and make a copy. And uh, for this one, I am going to go and choose uh, the light red color. Click on OK. Make a copy of this again. Uh, this is going to be the dark red color. OK. And uh, the last one is uh, mandatorily going to be the background color of the logo. Uh, let's actually duplicate this quickly. All right, and this is going to be the background color of the logo. Go ahead and click on OK. So we have four different colors. All right, I'm going to select this and just put them over here on the side so we can have a better look. I'm going to zoom in now because we're going to start the jersey design process. So the first one is the vector of the, the logo. Let me just go call this logo. OK, and press Control T and then we're going to shrink this down and place it somewhere over here in the center. Placement is completely up to you and your client. One of the most important features that make a good jersey design is actually the various patterns that involved in the jersey design. Just no simple shapes and colors and, you know, whatever it is. It has to be patterns. So if you look at my jersey design, uh, there is actually this, this ripple pattern that you see. Now, this is actually created in Illustrator, and I would highly recommend doing it in Illustrator because in Photoshop, you're going to spend one hour doing it, whereas in Illustrator, you're going to spend a couple of seconds. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So in Illustrator, here is where I am. Go ahead and uh, just move this over to the side by making a copy and holding down Alt to make a copy. And that's going to be our logo, OK? And this one, I'm going to go select this, come into the Pathfinder, and choose this button which says Unite. And it's going to become a one solid shape, all right? And I'm going to go and turn this over so we have a stroke and not a shape. And this stroke is obviously going to be black in color. Now I'm going to select this. I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt and make this fairly small like so. And then I'm going to select this again, make a copy by pressing Control C, Control F to place it right in place and make this to be pretty big. All right. So that big. All right. This big. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two, come here to object. I'm going to go to blend and I'm going to choose blend options. I'm going to choose specified steps and the number of steps I'm going to set that to 30 and you can set this to whatever number you want. You're going to understand how much number you're going to need when I show you what is going to happen. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Nothing happened because we have to go to object, go to blend and then choose make. And as you can see, we get this cool, awesome pattern, uh, which is pretty cool. Now, I think 30 is too much. So I'm going to control Z that I'm going to object or we can actually go and double click on the blend tool and set this to 20. Click on OK and go to the shortcut, Control, Alt, B, and boom. There you go. We have ourselves this pattern. All right. Now, if you want to make this in, Illust in Photoshop, be my guest, but it's going to take you forever. Now, once you have this, we can go to Object and choose um, Expand and click on Enter. And each path becomes a single shape. All you got to do is select it, press Control G, Control C to copy it, go to Photoshop, press Control B to paste, paste as a small object, and bam. There we go. All right. Now this is pretty small, so I'm going to select it and just scale this up so it covers the entire uh, jersey. All right, that. All right. Go ahead and click on OK. 
Perfect. Now we want to go and move the logo on top. I'm going to go ahead and just call this lines. All right. And uh, we are going to go and move this up and try to place it exactly. Okay. I think that's pretty good. We might want to make this a little bit bigger because since we moved it up, we kind of cut off this part. So right, pretty much like that. And there we go. This is looking really good. Now uh, we have to make this as clipping mask and what clipping mask does it, it takes the uh, object uh, below and masks it. So if I, let me show you rather than talking, I'm going to take the lines and come here to the front part. All right. This is the front part and I'm going to select this right click and choose create clipping mask and boom, there we go. It applies on the front part and only there, which is awesome. Okay. Now, before we do anything else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the front uh, the color, just double click over here. And I'm going to pick this color, which is basically the color behind the logo. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do that for everything. So we're going to go to the sleeve. We're going to add the same color to that. Um, even the color, I think is going to be the same color. Uh, so let's go to the color and uh, pick the same color. And there we go. All right. Now we could, we don't see the lines, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do for the lines is I'm going to double click on that, come to the color overlay and set this to white. All right. Pretty good. Now, once this is set to white, I'm going to go to the opacity and reduce this down to 40%. All right. So we just have a faint, uh, you know, um, look. All right. We don't want it to be popping out too much to the eye. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this by pressing control J. And I'm going to go call this uh, lines red, right? It's just going to be red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select two strokes. So the first one and the other one after that to be a different color. I'm going to press P on my keyboard to get the pen tool and make sure that I go ahead and just um, create a shape around everything. All right, and close this up. And once I close this, I'm going to press control enter and that's going to create a selection. I'm going to go to selection and choose inverse selection, which is going to select everything else except what is inside. I'm going to hit delete. All right. So if I press control D to deselect, you see, we have, we ha only have, uh, this one. Okay. And, um, I'm going to go double click on this, go to the color overlay and choose this red color. And we're going to have a red color stroke. I'm going to repeat the process again and get my stroke on this as well. So now we have two different red strokes. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I don't want this to be all the way from the top to the bottom. I want it to gradually fade down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the lines. Um, I'm going to come here to my color overlay, tick that off, come into the gradient overlay. And here we're going to go and uh, set this to a pure white. And the other one also can be a pure white. And but the opacity stop is going to be to zero. And as you can see, it kind of fades away. Uh, I'm going to go click on. OK, I'm going to reverse this actually. OK, we want it to be like that. OK, that's OK. And move the opacity stop as well. So we kind of end up seeing a part a little bit of the jersey. And maybe we can set the opacity down to 60. All right, to give a little bit more feel. And it slowly graduates and fades away, which is pretty nice. So now let's go to the back part and uh, add in the same color. All right, and we can go to the seam and change this to a yellow color, right? I'm just going to go ahead and set this to a bright yellow. Uh, this one doesn't look to be a very bright yellow, so I'm going to go and manually set this to a bright yellow. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to the top and uh, I'm going to go and choose my color. Now with this layer selected and this box, I'm going to press control and click. And that's going to, as you can see, that's going to create uh, this nice selection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. Okay. And then just go, go to the marquee tool, right click, uh, make sure you're all, you are on the marquee tool, right click and choose, um, fill and just fill it up with any color. does not matter. Press control D to deselect. And, uh, this is what we are going to have. Okay. But, uh, this is where the cool part comes into the picture. I'm going to double click on the layer and I'm going to go and choose in a stroke, right? Now this is the stroke. I'm going to go set the stroke to inside and uh, reduce this to say something like 10. Okay. And 10 is a good number. And uh, the color is obviously going to be the yellow color. So let's go to yellow and pick the yellow color. 
and boom. Okay, so once you have this, I'm gonna reduce the fill of this to zero. So we just have the stroke uh, itself. And then I'm gonna right click and choose rasterize layer style. So we just have this stroke. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press E on my keyboard and uh, to get the eraser tool, make sure you are using a hard brush with a hardness set to 100. And we can go ahead and just cut off these parts. Let's zoom in a little bit more closer and you know just just get rid of uh, these parts that we do not want uh, same thing applies over here this side as well and the ones on the inside all right pretty good and uh yeah that's good now i'm gonna press e on my keyboard uh i'm sorry press b on my keyboard to get the brush tool and make sure my foreground color is set to the yellow all right, and press the square, uh, the left and right square bracket keys to reduce the size. And I'm going to zoom in pretty close. All right, and then just, just come over here and just, oh, make sure you, you're choosing a hard brush. Sorry, not a soft brush. And then just go ahead and draw off this like so. Okay, maybe that's too big. We can reduce the size. All right, okay, that, 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 that was really good. So same thing over here. Awesome. And I think that I think that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna call this color ring. Okay, so let's start with the, the sleeves. Now, as I told you, you wanna make sure that the design is, uh, you know, makes sense with the shape of the logo. So as you can see, the top part is round. We're gonna add in a little bit of uh, rounding to the side. So let's go, and I'm gonna go to the color right now, actually. Uh, let's go to the sleeve. Actually, sorry, not color, my bad. Uh, create a new layer. Um, and then let's just name it layer for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press P on my keyboard, make sure you're on the new layer. And then I'm gonna click over here, come over here, make sure you hold down like so. You can even use the arrow keys to move them apart. All right, and uh, click over here. And we can come back over here and then just close this up. And if you wanna move any of the points, you can press A to get the direct selection tool over here and just select the point and move them up to the left or right uh, until it suits your liking. And once you have that, press Control Enter uh, to make a selection, go to the Marquee Tool, right click and choose a feather. Oh, sorry, my bad. Right click and choose a fill and just fill it with any color. Um, we can change it later. Press Ctrl D to deselect. Now, the reason it, it was only till the sleeve is because we have it only till the sleeve. Uh, because we are making a clipping mask of the sleeve. So if I right click and choose make clipping mask, you can see it's going to make the clipping mask only up to the sleeve and not this part. Now, if you want it to extend, obviously we need to copy the same layer and put it on top of, uh, on the front uh, part of the jersey as well, which we're going to do right now. So press Ctrl D to make a copy and then come over here and the right click and choose a quick clipping mask. Uh, this is also going to be a, as you can see, we need to make these two clipping masks as well. And there you go. We have this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this, come here to the stroke and make sure this is a inside stroke. Uh, the color is gonna be this, the darker color. And we're gonna increase up the size uh, to say around 80, right? Go ahead and just click on, okay. Uh, but actually we have to invert the colors right now. So my stroke is gonna be the lighter one and my uh, color overlay is gonna be my darker one. Cool, let's go ahead and click on OK. So now we wanna go ahead and come a little bit more closer, create a new layer, press P to get the pen tool, and then we're gonna draw on this bottom part of the sleeve, all right? Just click to create a nice, beautiful curve. Come over here, all right? Now we can press A to get the anchor point, uh, the direct selection tool, and then just go ahead and move this over like so, move this up a little bit. Okay, then we can press P, get back, double click on this anchor point that we, you know, left off at, and then we can continue uh, drawing like so. Control Enter to create a selection, and uh, we can uh, just fill this up with any random color, and then and then go and then choose our color overlay, color overlay, and okay, press Control D to deselect, uh, right click and choose create clipping mask, and boom, there you go. We have this cool sleeve. Okay, now I'm gonna go to my stitching and send this color to a black color. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go to my uh, the lines layer 
and I'm gonna go add in a little bit of a stroke and I set this to two uh, because I want it to be fairly you know this and I'm gonna go to my gradient and just click on gradient and apply that same gradient click on okay okay next up is um, we're gonna go into our front part for now and get back to the sleeve layer. I'm gonna create a new layer on top of all these layers, which is make sure that I'm in the front section, okay? And I'm gonna go press P on my keyboard, and I'm gonna draw in a selection. So I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna kind of trace this line that I have over here. All right, just kind of trace it, all right? And if you wanna cut it over here, make sure that this corner is sharp. Hold on Alt and click on this anchor point and that's gonna cut off the tangent and then we can just come and you know just create a selection like so. And then I'm gonna press Ctrl Enter to create a selection again. Come to my marquee tool, right click and choose fill and then choose this red color and click on OK. So that's gonna fill it up with this color. But actually what you want is just open this up, go to my um, color overlay and that's gonna be the this color, the same color of the jersey, click on OK. And then we are going to go into our stroke layer. And here in the stroke, I'm going to go ahead and set this to a just a proper color. And we're going to choose this bright red color. All right. And we're going to, I'm going to increase this up to a big amount to say like uh, 15. All right. 15. And then right click and choose quick clipping mask. And there we go. Now we want this layer to be on top so it can be seen. Yep, there we go. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'll create a new layer again. Make sure you do everything on a new layer. I'm gonna press P on my keyboard and I'm gonna draw a simple shape, all right? Awesome, and hold on Alt to uh, snap that and then come over here. All right, uh, that's looking good. And we can just go ahead and then just close this up, press Control Enter. Uh, to create a selection, right click, uh, make sure you're in the marquee tool, right click, um, fill and then just fill it up with any color you want, Control D to deselect. Now this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, this, th this layer that we created with the stroke, right click and choose copy layer style and come to the layer that we just created and choose paste layer style, alright? But this time we are going to go and set the color of this to yellow, oops sorry, not the color overlay, the stroke is gonna be yellow. Now this now this part is getting cut up, uh, so all I've gotta do is I'm just gonna move this over like so and uh, make this a clipping mask, all right? Now uh, we have an issue, we are gonna resolve that really quick. Let's create a new layer, press B to get the brush tool. Uh, make sure my foreground color is this. And I'm gonna increase the size of uh, the brush. Let's do a little close. Make sure you are on a hard brush. And then let's, oops, let's just start coloring this. All right, that's looking much better. Uh, right click and choose create clipping mask. All right, now we're gonna take the same layer, make a copy by pressing Control J, and we are gonna bring it over to the sleeves section. Right click and choose create clipping mask. Okay, and then I'm gonna just select these two, right click and choose merge layers. Okay, and then make a copy by pressing Control J, and bring that down or to the sleeves section, right click, create clipping mask, and ta-da, we have it till over here. Uh, but we want uh, this part to be on top, so it kind of covers this. Uh, so the next thing you want to do is a uh, simple small detail. Like I said, the more detail, the better it is going to look. So I'm going to press uh, P on my keyboard, uh, get a pen tool, and uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to just uh, select this one that we have, make a copy of pressing Ctrl J, double click, uh, let's go to the color overlay and set this to a yellow color, all right? Make sure that this is on the bottom, all right? And then just move this slightly up like so until we kind of get this protruding, all right? And uh, we don't want uh, any of um, these to be protruding out over this. All I want to do is I'm going to select this layer and then just move this up on top. There we go. Now we have one final thing left to do with the top part of the sleeve. Uh, make sure we are in our torso section, go to the top, make a layer, create a new layer, uh, press P on the keyboard, and uh, let's just draw in a shape like 
So press Control Enter, and then we can right uh, make sure in the Marquee Tool, right click, fill and fill it with any color you want. Right click, create a clipping mask. All right, press Control D to deselect. Uh, now this one we want it to be uh, below this line, so we can have to find that line. So I think it, it kind of got merged. Uh, so I'm gonna do is I'm press E to get my eraser tool. Make sure I'm in the right layer, and then just to rub these off. You know, pretty good. And then I'm gonna duplicate this layer by pressing Control J. Okay, and go to the color overlay. Let me actually zoom out over here. Color overlay, and I'm gonna choose the darker color. All right and close this and I'm going to move this darker color slightly up like so and then right click and choose create clipping mask All right so now we have this kind of a nice shape okay now we are almost done with the jersey design so we're going to have to do one side which is basically the left and then duplicate all the layers and throw that over to the right side All right so a few more things to do over here let's come over here <clears throat> let's press p on the keyboard to get the pen tool and then let's just create a shape like so, make sure you are on a new layer, press Ctrl Enter uh, to create a selection, go to the Marquee Tool, uh, right click and choose fill any color we want, uh, right, and double click on it. Uh, then let's go to the color overlay and then choose the color that we need, okay, and then right click and choose create clipping mask. Right now, the color of uh, the stroke is also not right, so we're gonna have to fix that as well. So let's go to the red color. Um, let's actually copy this color, or we can actually just pick it up from here. Uh, maybe this is uh, protruding out a little too much. We can obviously move that out and place that right there. All right, all these small details matter the most, is what I'm trying to say. So the next thing is let's create a new layer again, press P to get the pen tool and we're going to go ahead and start drawing from this, right? We can come over here till over here, something like that. And then we can draw a shape like so, control enter and right click, go to fill and then just fill it with any color you want, control D. Uh, we're going to come, we kind of want to put this down below and uh, we're going to go to this layer, all right, which is this, right click, copy layer style and come over here and choose paste layer style, right? There you go, looking cool. We want this to be at the bottom of everything. Uh, now we are gonna go and do something that we're gonna get up, we're gonna get ourselves more patterns. Uh, so I'm gonna go to my Illustrator file and I'm gonna go ahead and just create a simple rectangle like so. Uh, make sure we have set this to a black color, okay? And then just move this over slightly to the right side by holding down Alt and Shift. All right, and then we can just go ahead and drag this over. Select these two, uh, double click on the Blend tool, set this to 25 steps, I don't know. Then Control Alt B. Okay, I think that's too many. So we're gonna have to reduce that down to 20. Okay, that's still too much. Uh, let's say 15. Um, I don't know, um, will that do? I think this will do. Then go to object and choose expand, click on enter, copy and paste in Photoshop as a smart object. There you go. Now this is going to be, uh, let's say, um, color, color, color overlay. So this to white. Okay. Press Ctrl T. Let's scale this up like so. And then move this into place. Make sure we're going to make this as a clipping mask. And we can move this over to the side if you want to as well. Press Ctrl T and uh, radiate it. Now we don't want this unnecessary protruding part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Ctrl, click on this to create a selection uh, like so. And then go to Selection and choose uh, Inverse Selection. And then just hit Delete with this layer selected. Make sure this is a rasterized layer. And there you go. We have only this Ctrl D to deselect. And then you can go and reduce the opacity of this to 40. Or, I don't know, let's say 20. 15. 20. I think that, that's completely up to you. That's your call. So the next thing we want to do is uh, create this bottom part. So on uh, the sleeve layer, I'm oh, sorry, on the front layer, create a new layer. Press P to get the pen tool. And then we can start creating this. All right. We can bring this up till over here. And then 
close this away, control enter to create a selection, um, right click, uh, make sure you're in the marquee tool, right click, fill, and you know, just fill this up. Um, go to the color and then pick the same color. Okay, right click and choose create clipping mask. Well, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press create a new layer, press P, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, draw this kind of a shape, you know. All right, control enter. Uh, we can fill this up. Uh, control uh, D to deselect. Uh, make this a clipping mask. Okay, and now I'm gonna make a copy by pressing control J. But this time, this is gonna be the darker version. So let's go to the darker version. Uh, color overlay, choose a darker version. All right, make sure that this is behind. And then we're gonna just go move this up, all right? Uh, we can even put this behind everything. And one final thing that we are going to do is um, I'm gonna select this layer that we have, right click, which is basically uh, this layer. I'm gonna right click and choose a uh, rasterize layer style. So we just have this as one solid layer. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go and uh, these lines that we had over here, um, I'm gonna go and just shrink these down like so. And then I'm just gonna delete everything except uh, four of them. Uh, select this and we can even shrink this down vertically. All right, make a copy by, by copying it by pressing Control C and then just throw it in over here by pressing Control V. Um, let's make this a white color so we can actually see it. All right, and then I'm gonna rotate it by pressing Control T. And there you go. And I'm gonna place these right over here and make copies and move them up, holding down Alt. As many as copies as you want. All right, and then uh, we can select all these layers, press Control E to merge them, or right click and choose the rasterize layer style, and then we can choose, uh, okay, I don't think it merges because we need to go right click and choose create clipping mask, right click, and then choose merge layers. Right, there we go. So all this is one set layer. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press control and click on the thumbnail, which is gonna create a selection. And on this layer, I'm gonna hit delete. All right, now what has happened? This, we have these gaps that we created, all right? These teeny tiny gaps that make so much of a difference to the eye. Uh, and we can go ahead and just delete this, all right? So yeah, we are done with the left side guys now. Um, and now is the trickiest part to shift everything over to the other side. So let's select everything. Let's start with the torso uh, or the front part. Except the lines, control J to uh, duplicate. Make sure you don't press anything else. Press control T, right click, flip horizontal and press enter, All right? And then I'm gonna select this, hold down shift and hold down shift, very important, and move this over to the right, like so, all right? And uh, yeah, I think that that's pretty good, all right? I think it's looking pretty good. Okay, let's do the same thing for the sleeve. So let's go, oops, let's go to the sleeve, uh, select this, like this, press Control J, Control T, right click, Flip horizontal, uh, and then just move this over. And then let's zoom in and uh, let's move this over. Right, that was perfectly matching. Press control zero, and ta-da, here is our final, beautiful, awesome jersey design. All right, so yeah, so that's pretty much it on uh, you know, on creating, uh, not pretty much, well, that was a lot on creating a cool, awesome looking esports style jersey design. I know it did take a lot of time, but there was a lot of uh, information that was involved in telling you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, feel free to mention that in the comment sections down below. Subscribe to my channel for more content. Hit me up on Twitter or Instagram if you guys want to ask me about something or get in feedback of any of your designs. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye. <laughs>